Let me ask you a question real quick. As a federal employee, would you rather have more benefits, more withdrawal options, more fund options in the TSP, or lower fees? This is what we're going to talk about today because something came out that the House passed that is going to, I think, make a big change for the TSP, both good and I think possibly bad as well. And we're going to dissect the new TSP Modernization Act that is going to give you more withdrawal options but could also lead to higher fees. Hello, my name is Cooper. I write for FedRetirementPlanning.com as well as this channel. Appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Coming out with constant videos and it helps me a lot because we want to grow this channel because I don't think there's a federal employee out there that couldn't be benefited from these videos. But today I want to talk about the new TSP Modernization Act that I think, like I said, is going to somewhat revolutionize the TSP more than any other thing question, response, commentary that I get from any of you emailing me or writing in the comment section of these YouTube videos or on our website is, Cooper, I want more withdrawal options in my TSP. How do I get more withdrawal options? You know, the main reason that people leave the TSP is not because there's more investment options and there is more investment options outside the TSP and that is a benefit, but the main reason that people leave the TSP, at least from what I've been able to see is people want more withdrawal options within the TSP. So before this act came out and now it's been passed by the House and we'll see what happens with it in the future, but before now, if you were going to take a withdrawal from the TSP, you had two options. You either took a partial withdrawal, and this is literally taken from TSP.gov. You had a partial withdrawal or you had a full withdrawal. Okay, those were your options. You could take one partial withdrawal, and then if you decided to take another withdrawal, it would have to be considered a full withdrawal. That would either be come out all at once, or it could come out in the form of, say, a monthly income or whatever, but it was a set amount. You had to say, all right, I'm going to take the rest of my money from this account. Now, when compared to the private sector, that's, you know, like a very old, you know, outdated idea that somebody isn't, doesn't have that much access to their money. And so when we compared the TSP to the IRA, in that regard, the IRA was very superior because you could, from most IRAs, take a lot of withdrawals, as many withdrawals as you'd like, whereas with the TSP, they only give you a couple. And then if you decide to take an income from the TSP, you're pretty much locked into that because once you choose it, they only really give you a certain time period where you can change it and some you can't change at all. Now the reason for this is the TSP board wants to basically stop so much money from leaving the TSP. They think that you know if we allow more withdrawals this will leave the option for fewer people to leave the TSP and move their money, roll over their money from the TSP into an IRA. Okay. That's their goal with this, really, because they, I mean, they even had a campaign coming out previously, a big red headline on their website saying, stay in the TSP and all the reasons that they think you should stay in the TSP. Now, I'm not here to talk about, you know, if you should stay in the TSP or if you should leave, you know, I've talked about that in other videos and probably will in the future as well. TSP is a great program, okay, but the idea that fewer people will leave the TSP or take money out of the TSP, I don't think is all that great of an idea because here's what's going to happen. At least is what I think. People are going to have more access to their money, okay? And because people are going to have more access to the money, there may be fewer rollovers, so there may be fewer people going from a TSP to an IRA, but I do believe that there will be more withdrawals because people will decide, okay, I'm no longer locked into these two withdrawals. I can take as much as I'd like, and because I can take as much as I'd like, I'm going to take it for a new car, or I'm going to take money from my TSP for these medical expenses, or I'm going to take them for these financial hardships that I couldn't take the money from before. So do I think that their goal of seeing less money leave the TSP is going to happen? No, I do think that we'll see less rollovers. But I do think we'll still see a lot of money come out because when people have access to their money, they're going to use it. Now, for you watching this, the TSP has some of the lowest expense ratios out of any retirement plan anywhere. Okay, It truly is 
from a value perspective an awesome value it's super cheap they give you some great funds to invest in granted they're a little limited but overall you know they give you quite a few funds but the issue is the reason that you should stay in the TSP is not because of the funds or the withdrawal options or really anything like that. The real reason that people are in the TSP is one, while they're working, they receive a match. But the second one is to stay in while you're out of service, and that is the fees. If the expense ratios of the TSP increase, I really don't see a big reason to stay in the TSP. Because right now, the difference between the TSP and an IRA all comes down to the cost, okay? And you're spending very little for the TSP. I mean, the, the fee for TSP is nothing. But here's the issue, and here's the reason I think this will happen. So right now, BlackRock, who does a lot of the dealing for TSP, takes care of a lot of their trades and everything, they're kind of the ones handling the funds. Right now, they can have a good idea of how much money is gonna be withdrawn. And because you're limited on your withdrawals from the TSP, they really don't have to you know, spend a lot of money for those trades to basically pull the money out of the funds that they're being invested in so they can get that money to you because that costs money. And that's one of the reasons they're able to keep fees low is because of the withdrawal options are low. However, if the withdrawal options increase, that means more pun more money is probably going to be you know taken out. That means more people are probably going to be selling. More people are going to be removing money from the TSP. And if that happens, I can almost guarantee you that the cost of the TSP is going to increase. There's just no way for it not to increase. It just it has to. Okay. Now the problem will be how much will it increase? Because if it increases to the same amount that it, the expense ratio shows outside the TSPR, then really I don't see a big reason or a big benefit to you know TSP members to stay in the TSP if they're gonna pay the same for a Vanguard fund as say they would for the TSP. So that's what we need to be looking out for. They haven't said anything on that yet, but as it comes out, I'll talk about it. What do you think about it? Do you think that, you know, are you willing to pay more fees if you get more withdrawal options and how much more fees do you, are you willing to pay? Because you need to understand that that's the big benefit behind the TSP is the low fees, okay? So this has been Cooper with FedRetirementPlanning.com. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. It helps YouTube's algorithm to spread the video quicker and I'd like it to spread as much as possible so we can get this message out to as many federal employees as possible. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you next time.